Welcome back everybody. It's fall, perhaps my favorite time of the year, and I've got something special, a little bit different for you today. I wanna to show you how to make my favorite chicken soup. This is essentially my mom's recipe. My mother's name was Rosemary. Rosemary, one word, Rosemary Toven. Her maiden name was Kakula, K-U-K-U-L-A. So one thing I found out about Pennsylvania, growing up where I did in Pennsylvania, is all these ethnic communities, these ethnic neighborhoods, they really change things over the years. What starts out as Polish ends up being not Polish. What starts out as Italian ends up not being Italian. So this is my version of her chicken soup made from memory because it wasn't written down anywhere. Today I'll be using the Blackstone 28 inch griddle with range top. I'm not even going to use the griddle top. So you could re create this recipe in the house on your normal kitchen range top. I cook this recipe 100% to sight and to taste, so I'm going to try my best today to give you measurements so you can recreate it. I have a 16 quart stock pot on the range top burner, and I have approximately 6 quarts of water heating up. Now when my mom made this recipe way back in the day, we're talking in the 70s and the 80s, she used whole chickens or whole chicken leg quarters, left the skin, the fat, the bones, all that in there, and then we picked the bones out later. So all that delicious flavor created its own broth. Over the years, the food industry has just changed so much. It's kind of hard, around here at least, to find whole chickens at a reasonable price. So I end up using chicken breast or chicken thighs and just cutting up chunks of meat. So as a result, we're gonna need to add our own chicken broth or chicken stock. This happens to be right around four quarts. I've got a little under four pounds, probably about three and three quarters pounds of diced chicken breast with chicken thighs as well into my broth mixture, followed by chopped potatoes. That's about three pounds of chopped potatoes to start. I can already tell the water level, the broth level is super high. So as this simmers down, we can add more ingredients if we need to. Carrots. We're gonna start with roughly one pound of chopped carrots and onions. My mother, it would always be yellow onions. I'm fresh out of yellow onions. We have red onions. We're gonna start with about one to two cups of onions. And we're gonna do salt and pepper to taste. If you want it low sodium, just use less salt. Big fan of black pepper. And you have to have fresh chopped parsley. We didn't know what flat leaf parsley was in our family growing up but we used curly parsley. That's about two cups loosely packed chopped curly parsley. And I'm all about the garlic. Let me know down below if you heard my garlic poem on the road. Shout out to my subscriber, Barry, B-E-R-R-Y, longtime subscriber. I don't even know, 10, 12, 13 years. The guy's been around forever. He's working with a company now called Rub Done Right. And they sent me a bunch of their products for free, so we gotta use some of this today. Check it out. They specialize in rubs and seasonings that use black garlic. That is right. Now, black garlic, is kind of new for me. They told me they started out with 2,000 pounds of white garlic and through a six month process or so, this is brought down to 800 pounds of black garlic, which I'm told has all kinds of great properties, including antioxidant levels that are supposedly two times that of regular white garlic. All they had to do was say garlic and they had me. So I'm gonna put in maybe six, seven, eight cloves to start. They sent me a nice box of stuff, including their everything rub, their savory fish rub, and their black magic. My mother, she put this pickle juice, kosher dill pickle juice in our chicken soup. And I would like to believe that's the key ingredient. So I keep this in the refrigerator. We'll probably put at least a half of a jar, maybe even upwards of a whole jar of kosher dill pickle juice. So whatever the brand, just make sure you keep some on hand. Hey, that rhymed. And of course, uh, white vinegar, distilled vinegar, salt, spices, dill, mustard seed, all that good stuff going into the chicken soup. And you can see that my stock pot nearly runneth over. 
I typically will start stirring and we'll get a survey of where we are at and what we need to add as we progress through the simmering of the soup. My mother always added cabbage and I love cabbage, but it does cook away. So I'll put some cabbage in right now if we have room for cabbage. So just uh, a couple of cups for now. We'll let this return to a simmer. I'll clean up my mess and I'll check back with you in about 30 minutes or so. Hopefully you're enjoying all my new videos from here on the back patio. We have the new pavilion, which is allowing me to be more comfortable and bring more of these fun family recipes to you out back. So let me know down below if you want to see more of my family recipes. And this is where we can be a little bit flexible. It's been about 15 minutes and I can see that I have some space, a little bit of room. I can put some of my extra carrots, potatoes, and onions in there. If you need some guidelines to help you out along the way, those small pieces of chicken, they pretty much cook up in the first 20 minutes or so. The onions and cabbage probably cook up in the first 35 to 45 minutes, and the potatoes and carrots are what are gonna take you the longest to cook. So a guideline would be that once you get to an hour or so, start pulling out potatoes and carrots from time to time and give them a test. Perfection, nice and soft. My soup is done, it is perfect. At right around 90 minutes, maybe an hour and 35, an hour and 40 minutes, I wasn't really timing it. This is home cooking here. I have every ingredient, everything's cooked perfectly and I sort of forgot one thing. My mother served this and I always serve this with egg noodles. I forgot the egg noodles today, but that's probably a good thing, right? I don't need the extra carbs, but I'm a carb guy. So what she would do is she would boil egg noodles, strain them out, and then just put you know, a big clump of egg noodles in the bottom of your bowl and pour the soup on top of it. So if you want that, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, if you want it low carb, just proteins, vitamins, and minerals, have it like this. Let's do it to it. All right, look at that. Oh my goodness. I always wanna make sure you fill up your ladle with all the good veggies and the meat first and get plenty of it in your bowl. And then we'll put that broth in there last. We're doing a mega huge portion here today. That's what it looks like without the egg noodles. A Little bit upset with myself, but hopefully you'll forgive me. And then we'll sprinkle some fresh parsley on top just as a pretty accent. Take a look at that. There's nothing like a hot steaming bowl of soup on a cold day. So what we normally do is we freeze the soup in those Ziploc, you know, Rubbermaid S containers in the freezer, and then we boil up our egg noodles each time and just have them with the soup. So I'll probably do that for dinner tonight since we're middle of the afternoon right now. Let's give it a try. I already know what it tastes like, so this is fake just for the camera. It's delicious. That's why I made it. Let me try to get a shot of that broth and show you how delicious it is. Hopefully that's coming through on the camera. So I certainly hope you enjoyed me showing you how to make my mother's chicken soup. It is the best. It is so good. And I'm probably gonna be running to the grocery store so we can enjoy this the authentic way tonight for dinner. Folks, make sure you're visiting us at blackstoneproducts.com. Make sure you're watching all of our shows. And until next time, this is Todd. Praise the Lord and pass my mom's chicken soup.